That's just the THX logo. Really funny though, so it's up to you. <laughs> We're on. What's up, man? We hey, are? Guys, chat. I don't see Sam yet, just a little outline yeah, of his yeah. head. I've got the baby okay. in my arms and I'm feeding him. There, there. I think we told them that you're born. I got a baby in my arms too. Oh, I've got a baby in my arms. Oh, sick. Hey, everybody. Been a long time. We, we told them that your ball's deflated. So are those okay now? <laughs> yeah, it's weird now because like I just have a sack and there's nothing in it, you know? They went back up. And, you know, I feel like that'd be nice though, kind of. Yeah, it would be nice. I mean, like once you hit like 45 or something, they're just like, they're gone. That way no one can hurt you anymore. Yeah, that's all balls you, are—is a vulnerability. In exactly, you mean just a target? Yeah. Do you mean hurt you like kick you in the balls, or like you know, uh, like more metaphorically, like emotional pain? Yeah, both. No. I was just meaning like getting nailed in the balls, like by kids oh. or dogs or right, or, yeah, you know, countertop yeah, or whatever. I mean, like, you know, sometimes. You, you care about someone, you care about them straighten the balls in that, that kind of way, and then they rip out your heart and leave you at the movie theater alone, and you're watching uh, Wally by yourself. Wally the movie, not the child. Uh, I was saying kid, yeah. <laughs> like, you are watching Wally by yourself. Like, what happened? Uh, no, true. That was, I was like, think of any movie, and I, I chose the one movie that's the same name as my son. The movie that popped in my head was Lonesome Dove. I don't know why. We were watching Lonesome Dove, which I think was a TV yeah. movie, but okay. Yeah, it's like uh, six hours long. I think Lonesome Dove is a good choice for dads to watch alone, you know? <laughs> I want to watch it now. Is I, Who's in that? Sam Elliott? I feel like Sam Elliott's in there. Yeah, yeah, Robert yeah, Duvall, right? Yeah. What? Isn't Robert Duvall in it? Oh, probably. I'll find out. You might be wrong. Um, so my question is, okay, so if your balls deflate and there's not the stuff inside, you know, it's still part of that sensitive area of the body. So would it still hurt to get kicked in the balls? No, it wouldn't because that's the part that hurts. What about when dudes get their uh, whatever, uh, 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 vasectomy? Does, Does that, that hurt? Still, no, still I mean, that, well, I mean they, they stay the same. They don't deflate. Okay, so the stuff and is you still, still like there. you still ejaculate. <laughs> I remember my dad. I was like at a bar in New York with my dad, and he told me that he got a vasectomy, and I was like, "You did?" And I was like, "Do you still come?" <laughs> <laughs> I like asked that to my dad, like just without thinking, and I was like, "You don't have to answer that. I'm so sorry. God, I'm terrible." <laughs> <laughs> to answer that. Oh he was my like, God. yes, Darren, you still come. Uh, Wait, he said that? He answered it? Yeah, he answered it. Yeah. But that's Wait. what I thought. I thought you just like didn't come anymore. Wait, so come like, come like orgasm or actually stuff still shoots out? Yeah, you orgasm and stuff still shoots out. But, but it just doesn't, doesn't have happen. burning. Everyone's upset. Well, so is it blank? Picture, so I didn't hey, Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi. Hi. Darren says hi. Oh, sorry. Hi, hey, how are you doing? Oh my God, that baby's giggle. Hi. Hi. Bottle that and sell it. Hi. Yeah, his little coos. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, someone who has no love in their heart says, Sam, mute Mike. Do you want me to ban them forever? You want me to mute it? Do you want to be no. muted from the... No, they say Sam the mute Mike cues? because, like, they don't like your wife or baby cues. It's like, Emily sounds nicer than Sam, and the baby's yeah, adorable. True. What Maybe are we talking about? that you sound nicer than me. Well, I'm only assuming I'm interrupting a story about somebody's balls. How did she know? We won't talk. We don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Excuse yes. me. You were talking about emotions. Emotional. We were talking about... Uh, <laughs> 
We were talking about uh, 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 Gloria Steinem or something. We were talking about... Timmy says we were talking about Gloria Steinem, but took a while to find the name and then I was trying said, to or think, something. Uh, George, Georgia O'Keefe. That's what I wanted to say. Georgia O'Keefe. We're talking about Georgia O'Keefe. Right, we're not talking about Gloria Steinem. We're talking about Georgia O'Keefe. Georgia O'Keefe's balls? Yeah. We're no, her Georgia pussy O'Keefe's flowers. She, she paints the pussy flowers. We're having a very... It's not fair. Are you guys talking about how she was a Miss Sandris because uh, she didn't do any ball paintings? Wait, do people... Hold on. Put Emily on. I want to talk to her now. <laughs> this is interesting. She is on. Right, Wait, so is that real? Oh, I can, no, yeah, I can't You're, hear anybody. It is, but Sam Asker, is that real? Do people label... Jo- okay, George O'Keefe, everybody, has all those paintings of flowers that look like they're very vaginal. So are there really people saying she was a misandrist, which means man-hater, because she didn't do flowers that look like dicks? No, I don't think people say that. I'm just saying you guys say that. I wouldn't say <laughs> you do. I'm saying that. You're saying that? I knew Darren yeah. would say that. If I knew what a misandrist was, I would say it. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what that is, but I'm 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 all for it. I think it. it means like a lady hooker or a lady a lady pimp. A That's lady, what, a Miss Andrews, no, a lady hooker. A lady hooker. You it's a uh, you, you got a lady, lady hooker. Pimp. A lady I'm not pimp. even trying to explain the real thing because yeah. this is such a rare thing. The other day on the street, I saw a lady cop arresting a lady hooker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Ghost theories in chat says yeah, and Ann Gettys they hates make- adults. <laughs> They make lady hookers now? <laughs> I got that I've seen <laughs> Oh, uh, Guys, I gotta go. I, got, I found a new way to spend 50 bucks. Oh, only 50? <laughs> well, yeah. I've been paying all these no, guys they're like, 50 they're way more than that. jobs all this time. Those weren't even hookers, honey. <laughs> See, so yeah, well, have, have some self respect. The fifty, bu- hey, accept. I'm so tired of all the guy hookers I've been banging. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you guys ever been to one of those lady stripper strip clubs? Oh, so much better. <laughs> At least for my preferences. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, are you are you gonna ever come on stream? I, I will. Yeah. Uh, no, I meant come on stream. <laughs> I <laughs> already have. You just oh, didn't wow. know. Here, I'll take I was thinking one. about lady hookers. Sam Hamich808 says, how, how do you suck off a lady hooker, though? <laughs> True. Uh, you can do it. Girls can get sucked off. Yeah. Just got to try. Um, all right, guys. Have a good stream. Do you, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. Holding the baby. You guys could see right now. Girl can baby, get sucked off. I brought up a full bib for the baby. The baby is covered in food right now, and it's also all over Sam's hands. And now I have to take this dirty baby downstairs. She's got like I, I'm handing off to her. She just brought the dog back from the vet. I'm handing off to her a baby covered in food and a full plate of food. <laughs> to go down steep stairs, so we'll yeah. see how oh. this goes. Yeah, I have to hold the baby facing outward because that's how covered in food he is. Emily, just walk all the way out the uh, down the stairs, out the door, and just leave. This is this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> Timmy, if I didn't threaten to every day, <laughs> I'm always on my way out. I keep a suitcase. And a uh, and a briefcase and a sleeping bag right by the front door, so Sam knows. Yeah, man, what do you call that? Like, there's the the, the threat corner. What is that? Well, you know how people have uh, uh, go bags. She has a, a go be happy bag. <laughs> go be happy bag. Oh, it makes me sad because I do wish I had one. That is that is fucking hilarious, I'm, you guys. Go be happy. I'm gonna hold on to Flicka so she doesn't trip you on the stairs. Thank you. All right, love you. People are asking if Flick is okay because you yes. mentioned she's in the vet. Uh, hold on, let me. Yes, she is okay. Now I'm gonna turn my screen on. All right, so, uh, Ooh. Hermit Wise says Sam should have an eating up, race. Sam should have an eating race with the baby. I think that's a great idea. Uh, is it still forever. cold in California, or is it like warmed up now? No, it's it's chilly. Is it? Yeah. You guys have yeah, really had the here, fucking so. ringer lately, man. Yeah, it's. I guess it's today's a little warmer, but it's just been chilly. I mean, we've just been getting so much rain. Uh, Word. Yeah, yeah, us too. 
Uh, but you're like the first year, the, my first year in London was like no rain. It rained like 12 days. Wow. And this year it's like nothing but rain. <laughs> this has been cold, wet, and cloudy. It's like, blah. What do they call those? The, they call them like, uh, um, the, the like constant rain things, the, um, not a nor'easter, right? But what a um, what it's like the year, like a year of rain or uh, something. Uh, I, it, it's a word, and that month yeah, is it month? It's like a something flood or something like that, or like a yeah. hundred year flood. Deluge. Uh, deluge might be it. No, but it, it, I think it has to do with the with the the airflow or like the airstream. Yeah, the there's a word. Flood, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Every uh, a few somebody in chat saying, probably yeah. knows. That's, uh, people in chat are saying, uh, so people say Sam turned your mic up, but then a bunch of other people who uh, are fun are taking part in the conversation and saying London fog, that's not it, puddle time, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, torrential flood? Uh, I don't know, nope. that sounds right. Not easy. flooding. No, like like this year we're having uh, uh, something, which means there's like a lot of rain in LA. That's a hundred year, 500 year flood or something like that. But like... There's a there's a name for it. Another not, word. Yeah. Someone I, says El Nino. I don't think that's it, is it? Global warming? Yeah. Atmospheric river? Yeah, I think atmospheric river is what atmospheric I was. River, huh? yeah, atmospheric, atmospheric river, huh? Atmospheric river. So uh, <laughs> I'll show you guys what we oh. got. Atmospheric river. A atmospheric river. Yeah. You uh, uh, can't tell, but it's like fifty mile an hour winds today, and that's what it looks like outside still. Fucking Oh my river. god. Yeah, dude, see that oh. divot right there? See that little mound right there? Yeah, I know the, the screen kind of makes it hard, but see how there's a little mound in the way there? Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Is that a cat? So that is Margaret's snowman. There's a, like, that's a full snow. That's how much it snowed after she built the snowman. It's like, it's like, that's like the top of it. <laughs> wow. Rezos. I mean, it wasn't a yeah. big one, but still, like, Jesus Christ. Dude, and it's going to be April late. soon. It's late for us to have that much too. So th this whole winter has just been like, oh, this fuck. It, it's uh, the word I keep using is demoralizing because it's like, you know, it's been fucking four months. How was New before. Orleans? I mean, hell yeah, that must have been like just heaven. Right? Yeah. I, well, my daughter's in Florida right now, so you know, she with her mom. So, so you're still uh, in heaven. <laughs> Antsless heaven. He's always in heaven. She's she's out of the picture. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, oh, yeah, wife wise, yeah. No, Margaret's great. Yeah, <laughs> Margaret's great. Uh, so New Orleans was awesome. I didn't see a single booby. Didn't see any boobies, but had a really great time. Everybody asked that, so I don't I actually care. I wasn't going down there like, Whoa, boo, you know, but. Everybody likes to ask that because it's New Orleans, but no. I New Orleans? I never like went to New Orleans and I was like, I'm going to see some boobies. Maybe. I never thought that. Did you do yeah. like second line or anything like that? Um, we, so we, we stayed on Bourbon Street. And so I learned of one lesson, which is never do that if you're over 20, because it's fucking noisy till four in the morning. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. But it was fun because, you know, my friend had never been there. So like it was a full on experience. Like we wake up and drink, you know. As two of the only people from our friend groups, from multiple friend groups that can still drink, we're like, well, it's upon us now to party. But, um, but yeah, it was good. And uh, so, yeah, we, we saw a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, the second line's like the jazz, the marching bands, right? Because we saw, right. you know, we yeah. didn't track any down, but, but, you know, they were going around. We also did a cemetery tour, uh, the one where Nick Cage is going to be buried, but um it was really interesting beyond that. It's got Marie Laveau, who was like this voodoo priestess, is buried there. And they said she's the third most visited grave in America after JFK and Elvis. So, oh, really? It's hmm. like she's famous. It's like in a famous Catholic cemetery, too. But that was really fascinating. And the last night we were there, we went on a paddle boat uh, jazz dinner cruise. We like splurged and like, let's get fucking fancy. And it was fantastic. That's cool. Yeah, my That's favorite awesome. story from that is we're on the deck and a tugboat goes by. And Darren, you spent a good amount of time in New Orleans, right? You've been there mm -hmm. a bunch, right? I, I want to live there so badly. Yeah, it's great. Um, uh, so you've probably seen tugboats, right? Go up and down yep. the river, and they can really yeah. haul ass. But so we're just watching one after dinner, hanging out on the deck of the boat, and I was like, having grown up in the Midwest around trucks and highways a lot and stuff, I'm like, I wonder. 
And so I like kind of wave at a tugboat and they go like this. And nothing happens. So I turn around, I'm like, eh, never mind. And then I was like, yeah, he fucking honked for us. <laughs> I like, I like, like the, that, that, like the timing of that was probably like, he saw you, you went like this and he was like, no. And then you like got all yeah. like, <sighs> and he was like, all right, fine. He might not have known because how often does he fucking have people close enough that he could see what they're doing, you know? I think if you're alone in a boat in the middle of the night, it's like you're probably waiting for any kind of fucking interaction, right? <laughs> Plus, he wanted to show off for all, like, the people on the boat. Like, look at my big boat horn, you know? Yeah. This one time I was in uh, New Orleans, and I went to, like, a, a dinner with Rachel. And we, like, dressed up. And we're, we left the, the, the restaurant. We're walking down the street and walking by these guys, like, just these big beer cans in the street or whatever. Sure. <laughs> and... The guy, like, he looked at Rachel and he's like, oh, like, and then he, like, looked at me. He was like, nerd, nerd, nerd. <laughs> like, he just kept screaming it so loud. He was, like, so offended or trying to, like, make me <laughs> feel bad. What? Rachel and I were just dying laughing. He, he like, he was trying to, like, make you look nerd. Like your wife or what? Like, what? Huh? <laughs> I'm trying to understand. I, I, I think he saw, like, he's drunk. He saw a hot girl, and he's like, oh, okay. she's hot. Oh, she's with that guy? Okay. Uh, fucking nerd. <laughs> like, this is the only thing he could to yell at. That's kind of what I thought. Like, okay. okay. That guy hates Big Johnson t-shirts. Because <laughs> he's like, that Poor nerd that. is with all those women. The hot <laughs> bikini babes. <laughs> Yeah. He hates those old comic book ads where the little nerdy guy learns how to uh, lift weights and gets the babe at the end. <laughs> those like ads, remember? Yeah. Oh, um, another, uh, you know, obviously a couple of funny things happened, but uh, we did run into a bunch of Whitest Kids fans. I was on Bourbon Street, took a little north on Bourbon Street past the, or not north, I don't know what direction it was. It was past like the main uh, woo party area and went to a restaurant uh, like to get some sandwiches and, uh, we into like four or five whitest kids fans, like these dudes, I think they were in from Kansas, a bunch of guys, and they're all wearing like velour kind of leisure suit romper things. I don't know what they wear, but they're ready to fucking party. And before we went on the trip, my good friend, I, I've known her forever. And she was like, hey, uh, I was like, because we've been in plenty of drunken situations together. And I was like, hey, so if you get like, wasted and start trying to like go off with a guy do you want me to stop you she's like yeah stop me like don't let me go anywhere <laughs> and like so we meet the whitest kids fans one night and then like later she's like that one in the leopard print i should have went off with him i'm like you not no you shouldn't <laughs> it's like that's is, this is what that's fine you know but yeah, we had a good time. By the time we left, the, the bathroom in our hotel room was just lined with different empty novelty cup drinks, you know? Horny's so. Beer Downtown West says, that was me! Get out of here! Are you serious? I told them to check us out on Twitch if they have You're so gullible, Timmy. That's that a guy <laughs> sitting in Florida. Huh? I don't know. I mean, but you, you're right. I am gullible. But also, it could be them. I told them to watch us. You know? Could be. I had a guy uh, who was working at, I, I had dinner with my mom recently, a guy who was working at the restaurant, like, after dinner came up uh, and was like, hey, do you, do you mind me saying, and it was like, the, the he was super nice, and he was like, I do Twitch too, and I, I realized, like, oh, you know me from the stream, like, from the show and the stream, and I was like, that's oh. that's weird that this has gotten to that point. Do you remember when we were driving from Very L.A. Nice to San Francisco for a show once and <laughs> Zach got we, Zach was driving. We yeah. got pulled over. Is it, I can't remember if Darren was with us or if Darren was meeting us in San Francisco. But um, it was most of us. I don't think I was with you. I don't remember getting pulled over while Zach was, Zach was driving. Right. So, so we OK. So it was all of us. It was the other four of us. And I think Pemberton. Anyway, so or maybe Josh, I can't remember. I think anyway, so we get pulled drove over. back with us on that trip, but for right, some reason we had Josh with us there or something. So we get pulled over. The hypo comes up and you know gets whatever, and he takes Zach's info back and he comes back. He's like, "Hey man, 
I, I'm going to let you go with a warning. I just want you to know I really love your show. And, you know, I think me and Trevor and Sam also were like, oh, and then he goes, yeah, guys, guys with kids love it, man. <laughs> guys with kids we were, like, were watching oh. last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was exactly on that show. Yeah. <laughs> It's always funny. I I got um I had somebody it was funny because it was like for a moment I was like whoa this is a cool cop and then yeah. as soon as he said that I was like hey cab uh, no he was just watching something <laughs> just watching normal network TV yeah I've been recognized a couple times uh, over the ten, last ten years for world's dumbest and people had no idea I did anything else. <laughs> Because they're still running those episodes. What oh, a bad funny. deal I brokered for that. I got paid a one-time fee. Should have gotten a fucking percentage. You know? Do you, you know what happens to me all the time? Is people go, excuse me, um, I, I don't want to be awkward, but uh, are you Fran from Z-Rock? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, I was Fran. Timmy was Andy oh and Darren was Gary. Yes. Yes. Were those our real name? I, I yeah. Forget. Do you remember what they do with uh, the initials? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. yeah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Sam, I've been, you know, I've been seeing a therapist and on medication for three years and we had just Over gotten that, that suppressed. Per- I was going to say, and then we, we had just gotten that suppressed successfully and now we just brought it all. You just fucking bashed three years of fucking uh, really good mental health work. <laughs> Oh God, that was awful. How long were we there that day? We were there fifteen. I don't know, at least twelve hours. We were there the whole. I don't know. But so it was not much. fun. It was just not fun. No. I don't know. Shooting our show was you fun. Most played poker. I, I <laughs> yeah, lunch? you guys did. I don't think I did. Yeah, did I think we? we did. We played poker for money during lunch with the Xerox guys. Like, because they had like an ongoing money poker game that they would play every lunch. Hmm. Well, that's kind of fun. Yeah. At any point, there was like six people trying to direct the scene. That was crazy. Oh, Raph was there, yeah. Amy, what are you guys doing here? (laughs) (laughs) Well, Raph, sometimes you got to grease the balls. Sam Hamich, 808. It's rush junkies, not speed junkies. Say it right or pay the price. Not supposed to say that word. We're not? Oh, that's probably why they did it that way. People are asking an interesting question. How did that guy know? Darren, have you run into any Whitest Kids fans in the over in England, in the UK? Uh, yes, two oh. times. And I'm surprised like anybody recognized me because I was in makeup and a, had a wig on most of the oh, show. Ninety percent of the time. <laughs> oh, when I, I thought you meant when they when you when they met you. <laughs> oh, yeah. When they met me. You were dressed up like a minion, right? <laughs> like a what? A minion? A minion. Oh. Yeah, that's what you do for fun in, in, in England, right? You just dress up as a minion and you like walk around and go, Yeah. Da, da, da. I'm Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said mimic and I was like, edge of tomorrow? Like those alien creatures? Oh, man. That <laughs> dress up what like would a I man. look like? I well, that was them. shot in England and it's your favorite movie. <laughs> It's or, like the it best movie ever England, made, right? Yeah. That's why. When Jerry is that movie it. coming out? When is the sequel coming out? I heard they've I don't been know. Making yeah. it forever. They, they've been talking about it. It's, I who was I, I, there's somebody else. To, oh, I was, it was, I was messing with my dad, and I, I was like, I was like, yeah, they've been they've been making the second movie, Edge of Tomorrow, and he's like, what, really? And I was like, well, don't get your hopes up because it's it's not going to be like Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt as the leads. They kind of like are older and they're teaching the new crew. And he's like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, it's like two, two younger guys. And he was like, who? And I was like, it's they're basically teaching Kevin Hart and and The Rock how to how to do this stuff. And my dad was like, what? Really? And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I think they're trying to make it funny. He was like so bummed for like a day. For a day. <laughs> and then I finally told him. Oh my God. He would keep bringing it up too. We'd be in like mid conversation at dinner about something, <laughs> like talking about something else. And he's like, I mean, really? Kevin Hart in The Rock? <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. It's, it's, Hollywood's just losing it. <laughs> like, they really have, man. <laughs> I 
completely. I mean, I mean, the first one is funny already, but I would love that movie. Like, what if just to go and see that happen? You know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because because like you started to explain the new Top Gun movie, basically. I right. You were and say, a lot oh, of it's, movies. It's Miles Teller. But what's funny is I just did a podcast, a movie podcast, a, and the movie I chose to do it on was The Color of Money, which is the sequel mm. to a movie that's 25 years older than it, The Hustler. Yeah, the Hustler, yeah. And, like, the Top Gun sequel is basically the Color of Money Top Gun. And those movies came out the same year, Top Gun and Color of Money. Whoa, weird. Color of Money is the sequel to The Hustler that came out 25 years later? Before it. Or before. The, the Hustler, the Hustler came, out came out 25 61. years before. Yeah. Okay. And then Color of Money is a sequel to it. And, uh, yeah. To, uh, um, um, Forrest Whitaker. Paul Newman. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker is great. He's in it for like five minutes and like he's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Paul Newman um, uh, uh, plays the same character 25 years older. It's like one of those things where it's like, this is how old the character is supposed to be. Is the hustler any good? Iggy pops in it. Uh, uh, it's awesome. Both of them really? are awesome. Both of them are good? Yeah. Well, yeah, Color I, Money, I, I really enjoyed. Yeah. I've never seen I, that. Did I was you? initially disappointed, but I remembered, like, I was like, hey, I remember thinking Color, Color Money was so so. And then when I watched it a second time, I was like, oh, this is so good. Mm hmm. Is that, oh. that's Scorsese, right? Yeah. Yeah. But apparently, what I found out about it is like, it, it was like Scorsese was trying to make um, uh, Passion of, of the Christ. Or no, not the Passion, the Last Temptation of Christ. That's right. right. Yeah. Not the, not the, Easter one, um, <laughs> the Easter one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a movie about Easter. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, Hop, right? That Jesus movie, Hop, about the bunny <laughs> and Jesus. Uh, he was making the Last Temptation of Christ, and it like he like it fell apart, and so he wanted to make like a movie that would be like just a studio movie that's like on budget and on time and he did that one in after hours which i think both at the at the time uh did not do well or weren't uh received well critically and now are having these resurgences where people are like oh these are actually really great movies and i think the thing with color money that's that's makes it that is like Paul Newman had a huge hand. It's not like a Scorsese Scorsese movie where it's like right. his yeah. movie. Paul Newman had a huge hand in it and was, I think, the person who got Scorsese attached to it and Tom hmm. Cruise. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I've got pee in my mouth. Does any of you guys watch History of the World Part Two? Ripped off Civil War on Drugs. I haven't seen it. Well, know. you. the thing is with that, though, is that the Civil War, we didn't make that up. That was a thing. <laughs> uh, we Wait, like that when we, Yeah, when we started making the Civil War on Drugs, we found out that that actually happened to our surprise. And um, what? That's so <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, uh, it was same, fucked. Same chatter also said a little bit ago. Talk about Edge of Tomorrow, which just a, a quick note I want to make because I agree. It says the best part of that movie, Edge of Tomorrow, was the sound Tom Cruise made when he got ran over by the truck. <laughs> yes, that part. Oh yeah. Was so Funny. Yeah, but no, and it's Bill Paxton's response. Yeah. It, that's the best part of the movie. Is like, so what the movies. hell yeah. was he thinking? <laughs> like, that was brilliant. <laughs> it's like so good. Was that Paxton's uh, last movie? Huh? Was that Bill Paxton's last film? I don't no, know. he did a Nightcrawler the same year, but. Oh, yeah. He was so good at Nightcrawler, too. God, I fucking miss that guy. Oh, speaking of dead actors, man, I was really bummed about Lance Reddick yesterday. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about Trevor. Uh... Well, I mean, bummed about him, too, but that's <laughs> not new. No, I'm yeah. really bummed about Trevor every day. <laughs> yeah, for like a long time, man. <laughs> for a long time. Whoa, this is my life now. Huh. Okay. Yeah, it's... All uh... right. <laughs> I, remember, I still remember. I know we talked about it before. I still remember right. When, right when he died. Someone's like, "Hey, so when you guys get over it, what are you gonna do?" We're like, "We <laughs> get over it." What are you talking about? Yeah. 
I don't think you ever can. No, no, oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's. I've uh, always said it's more like learning to live with a tumor or a missing appendage versus getting over something, you know? So, right. You can have a tumor removed, but yeah. Uh, All right, Sam, just fucking do that. Just be that guy, I guess. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and you can get a fake appendage. We can't get a fake Trevor. I don't know. But Josh, no one's, a- no one's asked, Josh me, to, Fader, no one's asked me to try yet. What? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, Josh Batum is nowhere close to Trevor. Oh, no. like, no way. We should. To... Would it be fucked up if we made another uh, season of the show, but also made a reality show called Replacing Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> we just look for Trevor's replacement. The whole thing is us being like, yeah, we got to replace the one guy for the show. And then we just end up somehow. And we get we get Jim Carrey. <laughs> to replace Trevor, <laughs> and he's like not doing it very well, and we're like, yeah. he just Dude, keeps trying to do so his... serious now. Like, ugh, just <laughs> never mind. Can't you be funny? And he's he just tries to do his in living color characters. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's like okay. Right. <laughs> it's like it's 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 like when they replaced uh, Steve Carell in The Office, and they're like, <laughs> maybe it's Will oh, Ferrell, and they're like, no. Did they like try different people for like one episode each or something for a while? They they had an episode where they were like, "Oh, we're gonna have a bunch of cameos," and then and then Will Ferrell was it for like three weeks, and then they were like, "No, we're just not replacing him." <laughs> yeah, that was a dumb idea. Did Jim Carrey he met Trevor I think a couple times, oh. but I can't remember the sketch because like when he met Trevor, he was like. He was like, yeah, I can't remember. I don't know if it was like Sexy Deer or what sketch it was, but he was he was like, yes. I yeah. Do you remember him? Yes. Trevor told us. Yes, I remember that story. I believe it's on an SSS. We could probably figure it out. I think it's fun. It's slow. People are saying slow jerk. OK. Yep. That sounds slow I'm jerk. trying to think. It sounds right. Uh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> Jim Jeremy <Jeremiah> from Trevor. <laughs> Jim Carrey. That would be like this very different energy, those two. Yeah. Let's do <laughs> let's do that, and then we'll have Jim Jarvish play Trevor. The next episode is David Lynch. The next episode is David that's what I that's what I was thinking is David Lynch. Because like, just yeah. all the cool arty directors with the same white crazy haircut, like just keep switching them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with the uh, um, David David Lynch would be like. It's Bowser, but he's on a surfboard. <laughs> he's on a surfboard. Cooper, uh, Agent Cooper. It's a. Uh, he's too. The guy's too drunk for a tattoo. <laughs> he's funny. He like uh, in yeah. in. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you guys know like I Fonka was like this too, but like David Lynch, he eats the same thing every day. He doesn't go off or waver. At, he eats like tuna and olive oil with like an egg and like some lettuce, a salad or something like that. And then he eats it every day. And he doesn't, never changes. And Fonka was exactly the same. She had like two poached eggs for breakfast. She had this like pasta dish from this restaurant in Tribeca that delivered to her every day at lunch. <laughs> it's like, it was crazy. And in David Lynch, he talks about it. He says the idea to like eat the same thing is to have a completely comfortable place, like a home, a bubble that I can like eat. And because I have a foundation around me, a safe place, it allows me to go out and create more because I I have this safe place. I can go explore even further than most people can where they're just always out in the world i was like oh that's an interesting theory anytime he talks about his thought process it's always fascinating even if you don't get it you know he's he's an interesting guy yeah yeah it's sort of like how uh jason manzoukas wears the same thing every day (laughs) did you know that every character right (laughs) no no but but for for real he has like a (laughs) pair of khakis like he's multiple pairs of khakis multiple white button-ups and multiple um like fleece vests that he wears every day and it's so you don't have to like worry about what you're wearing you just wear the same thing every day i bet he looks cool this looks nice Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah (laughs) 
Somebody asked something here, and it goes back to a I'm right back. that I, I hate uh, that maybe we should squash. Uh, someone says that the uh, the Jim Carrey story is on an, an SSS if Zach didn't have it pulled. And someone asked me that on Zucchini Boys, like, why is Zach pulling all these uh, SSSs for different reasons? I was like, that's not fucking happening. <laughs> no, I no. Mean, we, uh, we sometimes have to, like, do stuff to the old episodes for whatever reason. And we take them off, but we, we put them back up. Right. And it's not because now that Zach's a successful director, it has nothing to do with that, right? It's like weird, like, copyright things and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, it's a it's yeah. number of reasons. Yeah, people are trying to, you know, make it into some kind of thing. It's like, whatever. What are we talking about? Oh, people also, saying that some, uh, pulling our YouTube videos for weird reasons. It's like, no, it's just kind mm. of maintenance is more what it is. But also, it's valid, too, if, you know. Well, if you want to, Yeah. Someone says that in chat too. I agree. Where's Zach tonight? Doing did stuff. You, did you try to get a hold of him at all, or? Uh, no. I've had a crazy busy day. <laughs> okay. That's why we were late. No problem. Um. Hello. Oh, so I, I, oh, so I'll, I'll tell. I, I've been. I was gone for like how many did I miss? Two or three? Actually, just one. Because we were gonna do one last week. It didn't happen. This would normally be an off week, so we're doing it now. Oh. I thought I missed like two. I felt really guilty about it. I think so. Anyways, but I I got a kidney stone. Oh. I wonder how many people in chat have had a kidney stone before. Can we do a poll? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I think I can do it. Maybe Sam. Do you know how? Let me get in there. That's a great yeah, question though because. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a horrible, it's a horrible thing. And and so it's beyond horrible. You're right. <laughs> it's like, I know in my mind, when I heard about a kidney stone, when I was a kid, all I, all I heard was like, yeah, it's a really spiky rock that you have to pee out your dick. And that's not, that's not the part that hurts. Like the part that hurts is it's like going between your kidney through this tube to your bladder, which is in your back. And so you have contractions like for an entire day Ugh. and it's it's a pain that I can't even describe. It's like a knife just being twisted in your back constantly. It was the fucking worst. And the first doctor didn't tell me <laughs> this doctor, they call it A&E here. It's like ER, oh. but they, uh, he's like, yeah, you just pass it. He's like, you just pass it. He's like, here. <laughs> Here's some, and they don't really believe in hydrocodone or any narcotics here. So they're like, you know, here's some ibuprofen. And you're like, no, no, <laughs> ibuprofen, <laughs> you shit. Like, are you kidding me? Like, dude, I need like to be numb. I need anesthesia. Like this, there's no way. So many um, people chat throughout that were saying, stop, please stop. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. No, I mean, who cares, man? That's a great story. I mean, you know, it's a horrible thing, but. It's uh, yeah. worth talking about. Um, Anyways, it was like, it was 25 days of having kidney stone. And then finally it, it left my back. It entered my bladder. And then it was like seven days of like, phew. But like you're the tip of it. <laughs> The tip of your dick always feels like it's like there's a little bit of fire there. Like you have to pee, but you don't. And it's like annoying. And then like at three in the morning, I got woken up with <laughs> like the tip of my dick was like, on fire i mean it literally felt like it was on fire and i was like oh, fuck and i was just like rolling in bed and i was like crying and i was dude i wasn't crying but i was like felt like crying but it was like a full hour and i was like i'm gonna miss a whole day i don't know any painkiller in the world that can help me <laughs> from this and so i just started guzzling water i drank like six full glasses of water and i went to the toilet and i just pissed it out it was Whoa. awesome and i was like did it Goodbye. Did it Everything shoot out good. like 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 in like when a rock is plugging like a like a geyser in a movie and it shoot like it's like it like no it was it was like a a stream of pee and then the, the, it just stopped and then it just started again and it oh. just and I could feel it go blip like right out my dick and then the fire just went away and I was like really uh, yes the but day two you. But day two, you in chat says that's the worst place for a fire. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, balls, balls might be the worst place for a fire. Yeah, yeah. Seven, just a fire on your balls. Have you ever had a kidney stone? Seven people said yes, and 62, 62 people said no. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am the idiot because I, I don't drink water. I just drink bubbly water. That's like all that I drink. It, did so, that was it? I don't know, but I, I every, but that's what that's like seventy percent of people who have kidney stones. That's why is because it, not bubbly water. It's just I don't know if it's bubbly water. I just know it's you don't drink enough water. Oh, okay. But I drank bubbly water. That's all I drink. So that might have been the problem. And I love chips. Like I eat chips all the time. So Wait, that's a are you talking about fries or are you talking about chips? I'm talking I'm talking about crisps. I'm saying it for you guys. Uh-oh. If I was this is a, here with everyone else, I would say crisps. But. This is his safe safe American lingo spot yeah. where he can Come on, say Sam. Fries. I'm yeah. just trying to feel comfortable. Cookies and trucks. <laughs> Let's talk Not about sneakers. Is there ever a moment where you're like, wait a second, McDonald's makes chips now? Oh, fries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, wait, well, they don't call, what do they call sneakers? Trainers. trainers. Oh, trainers. I knew that. And then uh, you're like this jacket, this little jacket, they call it a jumper. Yeah. <laughs> and then they have weird terms like punter. And I'm like, what? what's a punter? And they're like, eh, they can't even explain it. They're like, it's like an average guy. Oh, I've like, heard that used that way yeah. before. Okay. And he's, but they're like, well, like don't in say it. a negative that. way. Yeah, they said it's like a little derogatory, yeah. but it's it's not. <laughs> so it's like really ambiguous. It's like no real meaning. Hmm. But he was like, don't just because you're American, just don't ever say punter or don't ever use that word because you're just not. It's not going to come off the right way with whomever you're talking to or what you're talking about. Punter that equals sounds, Chad, sort of. Yeah, like schlub. Joe that Schmoe. sounds ominous, Joe right? Schmoe, like, I think that's probably a good comment. What if yeah, you're talking yeah, about common, American man. football with somebody and not accidentally say like, yeah, you know, the punter, then someone just fucking stabs you. Like, what the shit? You know? Well, it is funny because I feel like that is a way you could describe most punters in terms of who they are on that football team. Like, like their average. status on the football team is probably pretty much like, ah, oh, this fucking punter over here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No one's excited about the punter. Yeah. Erdo, Erdo Tali says punter equals Chad. I think that makes sense to me, you know, and like you can call guys like a oh, fucking Chad, you know? Yeah. Oh, do you remember the sketch Brad? Yeah. Yes! Oh my God! Look at me now. Was... Wait, was that Look at Me Now? Look at Me Now. Dude, my favorite thing, one of my favorite things Trevor ever did on stage when he's Brad and goes, Look at me now, Brad. I've got a wireless phone. <laughs> You yeah. see this, Brad? So do I. I... <laughs> that never made it on television, right? We did that live so much. We did that live. Uh, it was fun. It was fun sketch. I yeah, we never weird, did it. I watched a weird sketch the other day that someone uh, called out in chat that, I, or like in on the um, the boards that I haven't watched in forever, and I was like, "Oh, that's a pretty good sketch." What was it? Sorry, great story. Um, it's on the. Well, while you're thinking of that, I um, I I made a booking for a, a tattoo artist uh, to do to get a Stegosaurus, and so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get like about I guess the palm of my hand like this big, but I'm gonna get it on my back like right side, but I'm torn. Should I get Should I get a Stegosaurus with like a horse? And they're just like, they're like almost like touch it, like kissing. Or should I just get the Stegosaurus? Well, at first, when you started talking about your tattoo, I'm like, that sounds great. And now that you mentioned the horse with Stegosaurus, I'm like, it ha- has to be that one. <laughs> you, so That's you're it. talking about like the animals are just like facing each other, like almost lips touching? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're facing, but they're like, they're both like their, their heads are kind of down and they're just like almost like this. I think that would be so sweet. I'd right? love that. I lo- that, that it's, it's cute and it's funny. Trevor would fucking love it. You know? And then there's like a horse like dick. <laughs> I can't do it right. It's like, you know, shooting jizz out. So they're kissing and the horse has a boner. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> 
I was I had to explain that to my mates last night. I was like, yeah, I'm getting a tattoo like on Thursday. And they're like, what are you getting? I was like, a stegosaurus. I'm like, why? I'm like, well, and I had to tell them the story, tell them the sketch. Oh boy. <laughs> it's like it's the dumbest sketch and you're like, I'm just embarrassed. Like, guys. It's you know, it, it's always hard when you have to explain a joke or explain a sketch to somebody, but like explain I think you're right, explaining that sketch to people, like just verbally, has to just be like you're just saying like, God, if we sound fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, guys, it's a it's for ten year olds. We were twenty and we wanted to write sketches for ten year olds. So <laughs> leave me alone. Uh, um, I, I've been wanting to to get I've been thinking about this the tattoo and from wanting it to be something with like uh, with prison Paddington uh, yeah. because oh, yeah. Trevor was like the first person to be like I know to be like Paddington's gonna be awesome and then when we both saw Paddington yeah. too we didn't see it together but when we both saw it we were like that movie is fucking great uh, and it's true it's a, it's a great great it's movie fantastic. Uh, yeah. but uh, I was thinking maybe and, but I've had I haven't like got the like the right idea settled in, but I yeah. was thinking about uh, having prison Paddington with uh, one of his characters from Mars in a matching prison outfit. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Someone in chat says I can't believe I because I've been wanting to get a her one too and just uh, keep forgetting to think about it. Uh, somebody said nobody's getting a big dick Garfield. Somebody should get. Maybe I should get the big dick Garfield. Wow! <laughs> Remember that, that one? That's a tattoo. You're not going to. We know it. I don't know. I mean, I have a child, right? But she's yeah. like old enough. She knows that she's starting to like figure out. I, I think, but she has, she hasn't seen our like dirty sketches. But I think she. You she's know. old enough to know what a big dick is. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, she can. She just started to kind of figure things out as like who I am and what a fucking weirdo I am. And I think, I think she, if I got it, she'd just be like, she wouldn't be gross out anymore. She'd be like, ah, dad, you know, like dad and his friends and their weird big dick jokes. <laughs> Which It'd is be like, amazing. Like if you got Garfield and like the dick, like just kept going and went all the way down your leg and started pulling dick. around your ankle. <laughs> just what if, Oh, well, this would be painful probably. You get big dick Garfield here, and then you do what Darren talked about. You got the big dick all the way down, but then it goes down to the crotch over the top, and like the so the head of the Garfield penis is on the head of my penis. Yeah, that's great. It actually becomes your dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I love that. Then, then you, you are going to have to die. Huh? You are going to. You are going to have to die. You're gonna have to dye your dick and balls all orange with like black outline and little stripes on the balls. Yeah. <laughs> like You're the talking about stripes. like yeah. permanent dye? Yeah. No, no. Well, tattoo. 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 Oh, tattoo. Yeah. Yeah, orange. Oh my God. You gotta I tattoo your about. your dick to be yeah orange and black. That's gotta be so hard because like if you got ask the tattoo artist like I want you to uh, tattoo my my balls like all a color and then I need stripes on it. I mean, dude, your the skin of your balls is always changing and yeah, morphing, shape you know? and stuff. Sure. Yeah. You, you'll never get it to look right. Well, so um, that's the other thing. It's like, okay, so let's say you tattoo along the top of my dick, right? So do I need to be at fucking full staff so you can get the whole thing? Or do you do it when you're flaccid? You know what I mean? You got, I mean, I think you got to be hard for it. And so you better hope that the, the tattoo is some like smoking hot dude, you know? Well, that's the funnier <laughs> answer Here's for the sure. Big, some big hot I heard thing. what they do. They, 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 you, it is flaccid, and they take the tip of your dick, and it's like you're, you have to put it on a table, and they stretch it out really far, and they, like, tape the top of it so it's, like, really pulled out, and they can just, you know, go to town. It's We've only been on for an hour, and Darren's described a torturous penis uh, violence twice now. Twice. So we're, good, we're doing good. <laughs> I bet Sorry, I, if I asked... Emily, huh? what we were talking about now, she'd be she'd be like, I don't know. You're still talking about getting their 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 dick tattooed, and be like, yeah, like stretched out on a table with duct tape. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. isn't that funny, hun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's pretty clever, right? Yeah. Rip it, rip it. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, my balls, my balls are gonna be orange, honey. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's great, dear. Oh my god. Um, if I get the tattoo done here, it's like a good friend of mine is the best tattoo artist in town. <laughs> so be like, Polly, keep me hard. Come on, Polly. <laughs> you know, it'd be a funny place to get it is like the inside of your thigh. Like not quite all the way up to your, you know, your junk, but like, like right below there, because like, so it's like not, right like here, like here, like right up close. Yeah, by the seam. Here's the seam. So you're talking about like right here. Because that really is a spot where like only people who are getting the most intimate with you will get to see it. And yeah, so that that, it's, that like you have a lot of questions to answer in. You know, uh, a moment where you might want to be talking about something else. Because, like, that's a spot where you you're gonna have to hold your fucking dick and balls like out of the way. So you're gonna have you're gonna be naked from pants from waist down. You're gonna be holding this, and then in my case, a good friend who was also my daughter's robotics team coach will be right here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wonder if that's happened. Like, I can just imagine, I can imagine my friend's reaction. I tell him like, yeah, I'm gonna get tattoos. Like, sweet man, what are you, where are we going? I'm like, oh, you know, like right. Like, have you heard of Polly? Have you heard of erogenous zones? <laughs> <laughs> it's in one of my erogenous zones. You know, it's, it's the 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 belly button and the the butthole. Like, they look kind. They're kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're sort of similar, right? Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if you could ever like switch them. If they, like like technology, like medical. You could actually get them switched. There are tattoos uh, where people have like a, a tattoo of their cat in the belly buttons, the cat's butt oh, hole. Yeah. 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 That's weird. That's pretty uh, hot. I mean, are, like, they're similar, right? Like, because like your belly button was at like some point like a part of an intestinal tract. Mm -hmm. And your butthole is the end of one. Yeah, I like yeah. So because you're used to this, how is does that happen? Active. Like inside the baby, like right. so there was a it, it went directly into the baby's belly, and then how did that once how did yeah. how did that detach? Yeah, well you cut it when your kid comes out. It's well, I know you cut it on the outside, Darren, but on the inside. You there? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the inside the of the baby's before. belly. The baby's Sorry, inside no, of yeah, the. Yeah. Uh, What's the thing that people in weird places, uh, in weird places, but they offered it to us in Portland, that's why I said weird places. The placenta? Thing, uh, the placenta, placenta, thank you. Yeah. I, I remember when my daughter was born, they like showed the placenta to us on a tray. They show it to me, she's like, this is where your baby lived. I'm like, all right, throw it away now. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you. Because you have seen it, it's like this big and it's bloody and it's crazy looking, you know, whatever, so. Funny. That's sort of like the the routine that like people who have jobs like that go through, where they're like, oh, well, like they have to like, you know, they're involved in a number of people's biggest life moments, and they're like, well, I have this line that usually goes well. This is where the baby used to live, and <laughs> just sometimes it's so just weird. like, okay. It's <laughs> right. so weird. Oh, That's one of those tonight, jobs. huh? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like they're trying jokes. Like, you have to just go to a lounge afterwards, Falcon, like, the baby house joke did not go over well with the Feldmans. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just had to do uh, the baby house joke in front of a bachelorette party. Yeah, I guess the the, the lady got pretty. She, she popped as her water broke at the, at the bachelorette party. Was, uh, yeah. Dorcas or Billis had just nailed it. Tough womb tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, Very uh, good. That was fucking perfect joke. Um, uh, did you guys ever see that? Uh, have you guys ever watched like any of David? Not is his name David Brent? No, what's his name? David. Oh, Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. No, Ricky Gervais. Did you ever watch any of his stand up? Oh no. See Tom. Yeah, some some of it's good, but like he tells this joke that's like amazing. <laughs> it's like really <laughs> fucked up. But he's like, he said he's like at a party and he tells like this joke to like a couple guys, and he's like, yeah. So I'm just like I'm I'm sitting at home and like reading the paper and like my daughter like runs in. She goes, hey daddy, um, I was I was at the park 
and and I don't know. And he's like, what? Tell me everything. And he like puts the paper away and he's like, what happened? And he's like, well, um, there was there was a man there and he like he took me behind a wall. And he's like a stranger, like a strange man. And he's like, yeah. He's like, he was older and like, yeah, okay. Um, all right, what happened? And he's like, well, um, he, he took his pants down. He's like, oh God, okay. And then, um, and so what happened? And then he like, dad, he like, he like, he, he pu pulled down his boxers. And he's like, oh God, honey, I'm so sorry. Okay, just just tell me, tell me what happened. And, and she goes, um, like, and then he just left. And he goes, I'll make something up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, that joke kills me. It's kind of a you know, it's it's a weird kind of human thing we do where it's like in situations like that, like when something really horrible is happening, you're almost kinda I don't know. It's a hard thing to explain, but you know, like I feel like sometimes it's like you get a phone call and like you're like sometimes your first reaction is like, I wonder if it's the worst thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. A hard thing to put into words, but I feel like maybe someday I could. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring you to a dark place. No, I've been there for years, babe. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, somebody said, what was I gonna say here? Um. Oh, Big D Licker says, my wife's pregnant, congratulations, with twins. Uh-oh. And we've been saying they're womb mates. It's very good. Oh, I like that. Banksy Colorado says, Timmy, my wife had to have a C-section because bicornet uterus, which I don't know what that means, and the doc shook her uterus at me. Wow. <laughs> okay. Dude, that, that's insane, C-section stuff. I mean, I can't imagine what it looks like on the other side of the curtain because they're like pulling out organs. Like they're just intestines and... Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Nice. And then Ballard says twins... Are these Come donations, on. Timmy? Yeah, I was going to look at those and I forgot. Thank you. Oh. Um, by the way, folks, you can still donate. We're still paying for stuff. Um, I think How are we, we doing, by the way? I'm sorry. I've missed a few, so I'm curious. We're doing good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're getting close. Um, uh, talked to Sevon the other day. I've sent in uh, over lists of names for credits for cool. thousands of names. Oh, uh, sweet. Hell yeah. Uh, I think there's some. I mean, we have uh, screen names for all the Twitch stuff, but I think there's uh, real names for all the uh, PayPal stuff. So, oh. cool. Um, what so music are we going to play during all these sweet names going by on the credits? Uh, Can we get yeah, smooth. <laughs> play like something really long yeah <laughs> like a 12 guys, minute uh, song or? yeah like a concerta um my uh my, my daughter and i watched all the lord of the rings a few months ago uh, and i have the blu-rays of them and you know so it says like for one of them there was an the extended version so they're all like uh, long but one of them said four hours long but then like three and a half three hours 40 minutes into it it's over i'm like that's weird and what they did in those i don't know if you guys have watched them on disc every one of the lord of the rings on the blu-ray they thank every member of the online lord of the rings fan club at the end of every one and it's like fucking wow. 20 minutes of credits after the normal credits it's like whoa it's Damn. really long <laughs> it's literally 30 minutes of credits yeah, is what I, true harm says yeah yeah i mean i think so it's i just remember like you know, we we're finishing one and it was on a school night. So I'm like, okay, as soon as it's over, you got to take a shower. And my daughter went and took a shower and she's like, gets down the shower. And, you know, she takes off, she washes her face afterwards and does her hair and stuff. She comes back and like, the credits are still going. I'm like, just letting mm. the credits. It's like, what is this, a video game? You know? I, I wish that story was as she was like, you were like, as soon as this is over, you got to take a shower. And the credits start. And she's like, not over yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's 11. I'm not going to bed until the credits are over. Oh, my God. Um, I watched all the Hobbit movies with my daughter. Uh -oh. And, oh man yeah. what the hell happened there? there there's a music number in one of them right there is 
Well, they sing in the first. Well, I mean, they sing. But that's the yeah. song from the. Book. Which is weird though, because they sing a hell of a lot more in Lord of the Rings books than they right. do in the they, the Hobbit. They don't really sing much. Yeah, that's a good point. Wait, do they just describe the song in the book, or do they write out music or anything? Or it writes out the lyrics. No, it's like the elves are singing constantly. Yeah. You know, the dwarves sing. Yeah. We I read the. All the elves. Wacky man. What, dear? It's it's wacky that movie, The Hobbit, like the trilogy. Just it's. Yeah, I, I so much seen... unnecessary CGI nonsense. Yeah. Like, God. What are you doing? You know what's the most interesting about that? And it actually ties in, or to me anyways, but it ties into Whitest Kids thing. You know, we obviously have the Gandalf sketch where we're like, well, you just had eagles? You could have used eagles the whole time? Well, in the Hobbit book, in the Hobbit, they actually kind of explain, the eagles help them in that movie too, or in the book yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, in, in the, the yeah. Right, and in the book, they actually explain Gandalf has a relationship with the eagles. Not like a fucking relationship, but he, he knows them. And, yeah. uh, he uh, uh, at one point helped them in a war against the goblins or something, right? And uh, you know, that's, so that's mentioned in the Hobbit book. And then so they come to making the Hobbit movies, and they're like, "It's gonna be there's gonna be a Hobbit movie." I'm like, "Great, that sounds like a great idea." It's gonna be maybe two movies. It's like, "Are you sure?" And then they're like, "It's gonna be three. It's like, what? Like, there's not enough material, right? So then I went and saw the first one, and like Guillermo del Toro's or not, it's not Guillermo del Toro. It was Peter Jackson. Del Toro was gonna do it at one point. So Peter Jackson does it like, you know, they wrote new stuff using Tolkien's notes, but they kind of made up some shit, tons of stuff, right? To like connect it to the Lord of the Rings, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I wondered was like, they did all that and they wanted to make all this extra material and use all the stuff. They made up new stuff. And yet they didn't have a flat, they didn't put in a flashback where you'd have an army of eagles and Gandalf fucking up goblins. Like, why would you not do that? You know what I mean? And it would explain that like plot hole to people, you know, it's like, Hey, he actually knew them. So that, you know, I I was just like, uh, you know, if you're going to, if they're going to mine every fucking corner to put, make your movie as long as possible, uh, why not like do the good shit? That sketch had the best ending. I think we've ever done. (laughs) Then one day, goo (laughs) do raped him to death. And everyone thought this was hilarious. We made a statue of him, right? Uh, it was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that it was uh, Gandalf raping day. Oh, Jesus Christ. And they were... When people ask, are there any sketches you don't think would, would go over well now? I always say that one, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> nah. I don't think so. It's pretty, I mean, the end of it is just, uh, yeah, it's just us it's talking so about silly. Right, but a guy. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> the year 11 T 20 T. Is that what we say? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not finished yet. I don't. Is that in that sketch? Sam, what was the sketch you were talking about earlier? Oh, yeah. You were saying that somebody brought something up that you thought was a good sketch. Did we get to what it was? I'm trying to figure that out. Oh, okay. I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm gonna drink a lot more water because now Darren's freaking the shit out. Drink more water, kids. Yeah, why well, do it? Timmy comes back. Oh god, dude, no. That's fucking flash him. <laughs> no, when he comes back. Um, let's just, let's turn our zooms off and he'll just be on, on by himself. Uh, uh, And then we'll just, we'll just get the stream of texts on our phone. When Timmy, uh, how how about this? Uh, when Timmy comes back, we'll, um, give out his banking information. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, okay, because we have that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, you probably do, actually. <laughs> you probably could get that. I think I think I have it on an email somewhere. Um, so what's up? What have you been up to? Not much. Just started classes. Uh, yeah, that's and that sold out, I saw. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Two intro sessions, uh, and then... Uh, my what I called my level two and my level three both were 
good, but the two intro sessions sold out. And yeah. Uh, you ever like want to do like, like invite me to come and say like, all right, everyone, this is how you do a sketch. And then you and I will do a sketch. And then you just say, do it like that. You know what's funny is, um, wait, Iceman22 says, pull that mic closer. We can barley herer ya, bud. So I don't know what they're trying to say. But, uh, I think it's me, probably. No, I'm no, just using my phone. I can hear you. It's, it's me. Um, it's how, uh, uh, Someone today was asking if I could have guests in, and I was so upset. I was like, I'm not enough for you. And they're like, could you have someone you've, because it's like the whole thing is about collaborative writing, and they're like, could you have someone you collaborated with to write? And I was like, no, it's only me. But yeah, if mm. you want to come and hang out during class, yeah. People, <laughs> no. people love it. No, I would be disruptive. You don't? Oh, no, I would love to have you guys. Yeah. Uh, um, I am hearing my daughter calling me, so oh. it's late. I got to I got to go. Read her a story. I'm sorry. You done? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm done. Um, but invite me to the next one. Yeah. Yes. Oh. When are you guys still doing the trailer things? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's Trailer the Boys turn. tomorrow. We're doing a tournament tomorrow. You guys do it like really late there. So yeah. it'd be two in the morning my time. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only it that. starts. <laughs> when it gets over, you got to be cooking breakfast, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I like to joke. Oh, here's the thing, uh, real quick. So I always make fun of Trailer Boys for being too long, even though I love it. Well, the Candy Boys the other night went to three hours and 20 minutes, and I said, I gotta go soon or else I won't be able to make fun of Sam and Nate anymore. So I think now I've given up on that. Well, good for you, buddy. Yeah, it was fun. I all right. Well, it was good seeing all of you. Love you all. I look Love forward to doing the next I'm one. You're, I'm glad your stone's gone, buddy. Oh, man. Yeah. Right. Did you say that? I did it. It went down into the toilet. Like I looked for it and it was just gone. So that would apparently you you, if, you, it. if you get it, you can look at it and, and you can diagnose why you got it. Get the so like, if it's like white or something like that, you didn't drink enough water. But if it's like red, it means you like had too much sodium or yellow and something else. So that's what I wanted to collect it, but it, it went too far in the toilet and I wasn't going to be like, um, Train spotting. One last that thing. Been, that would have been cool well, to like make a ring out of it, like <laughs> make a ring and have it be like the stone, the necklace. Do you think yeah. it smells? I wonder if it smells bad. No, probably <laughs> smells great. Nah. No. <laughs> yeah, right, before you go, you're on the way out. Yeah, real all. quick, yeah. Pope Poop says in all caps, "Nerd." Oh, he left. Damn it. <laughs> uh. Kidney Stone Boys, don't even fucking joke about that. Listen, I I wanted Darren to have his moment to explain that if he felt like talking about it in public. And wow, it was terrifying. And the the whole time, I mean, when I first heard about kidney stones in eleventh grade, tenth grade, something like that, a biology class, and the, the our uh, teacher went into it, I like left and it went to the bathroom and i was like you know fucking 15 or 16. i go to the bathroom i'm like fuck i'm gonna have one right now i just know it <laughs> yeah Ugh. yeah i i don't uh my i have you know you've always known this about me but my my urethra is huge yeah we used to like put stuff in it yeah be like, Sam, pull your pants out. I'm going to throw you a football. <laughs> well, I, I had those gauges uh, <laughs> to stretch it out. And then that way. <laughs> Let's start a death metal band called Urethral Gauge. <laughs> and you write into that awesome death metal font they use all the time now where you can hardly uh, tell. That'd be great. Um, oh, God. Someone says, Drew Miller says, I just had my first one a month ago. I'm only 31. Okay, first of all, too bad. Uh, and I'm sorry, and I hope you're okay. 
that's something I would not put first yeah. in front of. Just say yeah, I have hopefully one. Hopefully, it's your only one. Yeah. 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 It reminds me of uh, of a comedy friend of ours many many years ago who uh, came to Rafifi. I was sitting at a table with a couple friends, and he comes up. He sits down. He's like. And he, we start talking. He says, last night I had my first threesome. And we we're like, that's presumptuous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, Drew Miller says they run to my family. Fuck, that sucks, man. Oh, wow. That's too bad. Uh, appendectomies run to my family. Sam uh, had to drive me to get behind once. I've told that story before. Yeah. But yeah. Um, okay, this is Blas Barbie says. Penises run in my family. <laughs> Charming dimples. I right, think man. I might be adopted. Uh, oh, dude, I like how you did that. Yo, and you can learn that kind of joke structure if you take Sam's class, because that was that was a good dismount. Um, Blab Bar- Blarby says, I had a catheter from brain surgery, and afterwards my dick would just make fart noises for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, how'd the brain surgery go? <laughs> uh, yeah, are you all right? He likes us, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not good. I'm here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not good. I under not good. I understand you guys now. <laughs> yeah. Last says good. It went good. Well, good to hear. It. That's good. Uh, oh Jesus Christ! There's been some. Someone says this has been a gross. This is really funny. I got to screen print this because someone says in all caps. This has been a gross stream. And the chat message immediately under that one is, the first time I had sex after having a catheter, I came blood. <laughs> you can't fucking make that up. I love it. Yeah. Uh, anyways. The first time? That's presumptuous. <laughs> the first time what? The first time you had sex after you had a catheter. Oh. That's presumptuous. <laughs> It kind of is, maybe. Um, anyways, I'm a uh, screen. Uh, yeah, I, that's just a really funny little uh, little moment. But um, oh, what else is new, Samwise? I'm exhausted. Yeah, what have you been up to? You have family in town? What's going on? I have I have family in town. My brother's in town. Oh wait, are you guys gonna be in the same room tomorrow for Trailer Boys? Yeah, we're gonna be in the same room. Whoa, that's gonna be trippy. Yeah, it's gonna be weird. We've never been in the same room before. Um, I know your mom tried really hard to keep yeah. you guys a secret from each other. I, I remember that, but she that told weird. me. She yeah. told me right when we met. She's like, "Nice to meet you." Sam's got a brother. I'm like, what the fuck? I did not know. Don't tell anybody. Uh, Nate's real. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's not just mm-hmm. me in a costume. Um, yeah, I, I uh, had class at 11 I fed Wally at 10 had class at 11 and then at 2 had class till 2 and I went on a podcast from 2 till before the show started and then oh. I started the show and for a period of that podcast I, I was like feeding Wally again oh, because uh, Flicka this is sorry this is all like the boring like Holdrum Holdrum? Is that Holdrum? Doldrum? Humdrum. Humdrum of the mm-hmm. show, but uh, Flicka last night jumped off of the bed and uh, started, uh, she shrieked a little and then started limping. And oh, so no. we got her to the vet today, and that's why I kind of, today oh. was already a, a pretty packed day, and then I, uh, it's going to be a little bit more. And then I've got, I'm uh, Emily and I are doing a sketch show with uh our friends with a couple other friends of ours and we are writing after this stream so oh, fun. that's gonna be fun though I sounds am. like a good time i'm zonked guys i'm sorry yeah, man. i feel like i feel bad i don't have a lot of energy right now okay but. here here's why here's why we uh stream tonight because last week we didn't do it i said maybe we should try and do it this week and then we kind of didn't really talk about it so much and then Earlier today on Reddit, someone posts on Reddit like, they're streaming tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern time, which I was like, who the fuck ever said that? No. Yeah. And so then I texted everybody. I'm like, we're not doing that, are we? It seems like, no, I'm going to be on this podcast thing. 
And uh, I was like, well, should we do it? And so that that's why we did it, just so we could like tell people like, no, not that, but okay, we should do it. So here's the time, you know? <laughs> I think they just took the thing from when we did Fucked Up Friday or whatever that was called. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah. Timmy, we're going to be doing another Coke stream. Coke stream? Where you do a bunch of Coke, you do a bunch of blow, and you stay up all night. Talking, um, talking to everyone about the plans you want to make. It's gonna be a lot of fun, you guys. You don't understand. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, well, around here we get mass and a cook. <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah. A cook stream. Yeah, I'm gonna stir a bunch of blue liquid and just go, Jesse, Jesse. Um, I uh, well, I just did one on Thursday, and I did New Orleans food, which means I made a mufflette sandwich. Which doesn't sound hard, but I made the mufaletta, the olive dressing oh. stuff. And I made gumbo, which turned out fucking fantastic. And, um, oh, and I made a hurricane, which was probably good. <laughs> but I said, uh, I said at one point, you know, when I finished a hurricane drink, I'm like, you gotta make sure you have the right kind of glass to really get the flavor out. And so I pulled out, uh, you know, the giant souvenir fleur de lis plastic cup that I saved from New Orleans. But I didn't save the straw, so I poured the hurricane in this thing and just like drank it out of this giant tube. Oh, wow. It was all over me. Um, Timmy doing a Coke stream. I wish awesome I had my brother's happening. soundboard right now. Because it, oh. it would say, spray it all over my chest and face. Exactly what fucking right happened. Someone yeah. says, Timmy doing a Coke stream would be awesome, not gonna lie. I've never done Coke because I'm like this already. <laughs> you know, can you imagine? Fucking, that'd be horrible. Or would I slow down? No, you probably, you probably, you know, get get all hyped up. Right, which is like my my zero point. So you know, coke. Oh man. Uh, he said, "I'd much rather Timmy do an acid stream." Uh, what? Someone said, "Coke mellows out people with ADHD." That could be true because I've heard the caffeine and I used to drink a lot of night coffee and it would put me to sleep. And I heard that that is actually can be an ADHD thing too. So. Oh, yeah. I drink night coffee sometimes. I drink I'm a lot of coffee. I think that's like, I need more coffee. It's my oh, sort of yeah. thing right now. Uh, I remember one of my therapists, you know, because I have severe anxiety and uh, too. And uh, my therapist said, I, I was like, man, it gets really bad, really bad. This is a couple years ago. I was like, it gets really, really bad at like three, four in the afternoon. She's like, do you drink a lot of coffee every day? I said, only from like nine to five. And she's like, well, do you drink coffee the whole time? I'm like, what? I said, you know, those those big classic construction worker Coleman, like a pale green, those Coleman canteens or no Stanley canteens, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, and this, I, I, I'm like, I, I'd make one of those. Uh, I make my own coffee and I'd make it one of those like every day and drink it. And I started getting like a brown stain on my teeth. And she was like, wow. And I was like, is that a lot? She goes, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of coffee. <laughs> it's not a little. Uh, okay, Game Club guy must really be one of the people from New Orleans that we met. Cause he says, Timmy, do you still have the Horny's beer necklace for New Orleans? I do. I don't know where it is, but they gave me a necklace that one of them 3D printed a little beer bottle on it that says Horny's beer. <laughs> Wait, Game Club guy. Uh, yeah. Who, oh, that's who's, who's your friend in the leopard print, huh? Yeah, let's get his digits. Game Club <laughs> guy, were friend. you the the guy in the leopard print? Or Oh, maybe it is. Uh, too much television had asked this several times, so I'm going to answer this. Timmy, we tweeted about the Twin Peaks International Special last night. So um, I watched the 20 minutes that are different from the real pilot uh, because I just watched the pilot like two days ago. So, hmm. um, have you, you know about that, Sam, what it is? No. Really? Huh? You do? No. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're ever much of a Twin Peaks guy, but this is interesting oh, yeah. in either way. Huh? Yeah. You are. I, okay. I haven't seen the new stuff, I, I but oh. the original series. Uh, and I'm uh, buddies with uh, Ray Weiss's daughter and met Ray oh, Weiss. Oh, you are? I've, oh, that's I've fun. had him on a show before where, we, where I had the, the honor of interviewing him and basing sketches off of his life and I've heard lots of cool things lots of cool stories oh, he did one of those cool yeah yeah he uh told us stories about swamp thing uh where he said that was like the most miserable experience he had of uh shooting anything 
because <laughs> uh, they because they had someone who played like the body and he played the head and the head was like it like didn't move the swamp thing mask so he played the human and, guy too before it turns into swamp thing yeah 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 and uh apparently uh he they like shot a bunch of stuff with him and they were like oh we don't like the way the head looks so we're just gonna use your voice but it was like, you know, like in Louisiana in the summer. Uh -huh, it was like uh -huh. a miserable shooting experience. That's crazy. <laughs> the so, leopard print guy is not married. The mustache uh, guy is married. Also, my, okay, Twin I remember Peaks mustache Rocks. guy. Huh? Oh, Twin Peaks Rocks, it does. So the international pilot is, so when they, when they were making the show, they made the pilot, but they also, the international market wasn't getting uh, the whole show, even if, they didn't know if they're going to whole show for a while. And even they didn't know if they're going to whole show yet. And even if they were going to go, well, Europe wouldn't get it for a while. So they made a version of the pilot with 20 extra minutes on the end that just solves the mystery. <laughs> and he, the, some of the footage in it, uh, but what's weird about it is so, and this is not really a spoiler because, uh, so the 20 minutes does have the dream sequence, the very famous dream sequence that they did use on the show a couple of uh, episodes later. Like the famous Red Room, the first drink se uh, dream sequence that Gummy Like is going to come back in style. The way it's used in the in the in the to in solving the mystery is crazy because they solve the mystery and then they have that scene. It just says 25 years later and just shows that dream sequence and then it's over. Wait, I have a question though. Wait, yeah. Maybe I missed this. Sorry, I'm like, I'm no, getting okay. out of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you said they weren't sure if they were going to show the whole show in Europe. They weren't, they didn't know if they were getting a show period yet. So they shot the pilot. And so then they also shot this extra stuff because even whether or not they got on the uh, TV in America, they, they would only be able to put out like the pilot as a movie in Europe because they weren't going to get the show for a while or something like that. And when I was asking about this on Twitter yesterday, some people who are from overseas were like, yeah, for a long time, the only VHS we could get of the pilot was this weird version that solves the mystery. Wait, but that doesn't make any sense because they didn't solve the mystery. And, like, he, he originally didn't want to solve the mystery. Right, but, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying not to say too much. But, uh, the, uh, so the, the solution to the mystery you're talking about is not oh, it's where not they the get same. to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It is the first part of that, but not the second part. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The first part that they do figure out in the first season, that's what they do. And so, just to, a little bit of spoiler ish, but so Mike and Bob are real people, is kind of how that goes. <laughs> They're fucking guns. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Um, someone said, dude, it's been 30, uh, 30 years old. Uh, dude, it's like 30 years old. We're past spoilers. We, we really aren't. I think. Nah. You know, you, you, yeah, that's... to really like get to the experience of Twin Peaks, you gotta like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's a little spoilery to know that it wasn't really first intended to know that it was um, right. Uh, to be solved, but still, I think like to really enjoy it, you have to be wondering like yeah. what's going on, and yeah. I, I, but I think the appreciation of the show goes beyond it having having it spoiled in that that sort of uh oh, yeah. revelation hence um, the rewatches i'm rewatching it for the third time or fourth time all the way through yeah and um but yeah uh <laughs> so someone There's said some... just tested yeah. negative for covid bitches despite making out with my hot positive wife on the reg this week <laughs> Uh, <laughs> weird flex, man. Uh, I like it. But for, also, it was also like thought, a weird place to put positive, right? Right, because I thought for a second he's like, I'm pretty sure she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like, she's hot and she has a good outlook on life. She's kind of an optimist. <laughs> um, really? A hot person having a positive outlook? Um She's hot positive, She's hot guys. Positive. That's so She's, funny. Oh, you don't want one of those. You don't want your wife to be hot positive. That's. Hot positive. <laughs> She's going to go elsewhere if she's hot positive. <laughs> <laughs> she sticks up for hot people way too much. Uh, 
but uh yeah and you know some things uh after a while you talk about the spoiler but some things sometimes the, the uh, uh spoiling moment is such a good part of the art that you don't want to which sam's right twin peaks is a big one i wonder if it'll ever be cool to spoil barbarian probably not i feel like that's a big big thing it's a big is that is that movie's good after you already know it but i feel like the spoiler itself is such a great ride the first time that i kind of wonder if it will ever be one of those things that's acceptable to spoil you know yeah um true you know because because i mean you know i've watched it a few times it's great it's always fun to watch but that first time you know whoa you know, so zach what? spoiled it on the very first stream since it released yeah. maybe there's well, a lot he's allowed to he's oh right spoiled, it's, all you know, it's his movie Elaine works says why don't we have a milk bottle emote that'd be great oh the PCP bot wait what they, they want a milk bottle emote like you know the milk bottle oh oh, oh from the... do we have a PCP bottle emote I don't know Oh, Danis says this, and I'll, I'll read this, and then I have a quick funny story related to it. Uh, Danis says, I worked with a guy who spoiled Force Awakens, so I blocked him on social media. A few years later, everyone at work is complaining about Game of Thrones spoilers. Luckily, I never refollowed him. So the guy just habitually spoils people, I guess. But, um, so I had a... What is there to spoil in Force Awakens? There's a major character death. Oh, uh, yeah. all right. Um, I know you don't like those movies, so it's okay, but people like were really, and plus no one fucking knew what those movies were going to be about at that point. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, uh, I, I took my daughter to it. Uh, she was like five, four and a half, five at the time. And, you know, I, I also, you know, I hate spoilers. I also hate it. Uh, I hate like, uh, all the acceptably misogynistic things we let go on in society. I hate it when men just comment on ladies' appearances that they don't know out in public. And so my daughter and I saw this movie, and then like a week later, we're at the store doing something, and some guy comes up to her, just some old man, and she's like a little cute kid, right? He wasn't being weird, but he goes, he goes that's such a pretty dress you have on. And Margaret looks him right in the face and goes, I'm solo. <laughs> Well, I'll say the whole fucking thing now. Anyways, that's what she said to the guy. She said, Han Solo dies. And he goes, oh. <laughs> Fuck the way. And I was like, man, that's a fucking great way to handle cat calling. Because <laughs> yeah. there's probably going to be some guy that cares about something like that, you know? <laughs> hey, baby, how about a smile? Ed Norton and Brad Pitt are the same dude. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. Like, like. <laughs> It's also like kind of a creepy thing to hear from a kid. Like, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, Han Solo dies. What made you think of that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if Someone Han Solo can die, Star you Wars. can too. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I showed her all the other movies, and so I think it was a big deal to her. So it was probably something she was thinking about. Because I remember, you know, she's yeah, like four yeah, when yeah. I showed her the old ones, and then when we saw the trailer for Force Awakens, she's like, "Who's that old guy?" And I was like. All right, time to time to talk about the concept of time. <laughs> She's like, remember the handsome smuggler from the old ones? Well, he's old. Yeah. But it was, a, it was a funny thing to do. But you wait, man. When your son's like three, they say some crazy stuff once they start having thoughts but not quite sure exactly how to express it. Um, I, I, I probably have told this story before, but um, way back uh, when Mark was like three – I had a girlfriend at the time who was living with me and I went to work and she told me this a couple of days later. She's like, yeah, so this is how I woke up this morning. I hear the door open and Margaret is standing there and goes, hey, do you know about sneaking? And the lady was like, what do I need to know? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I have another one like that that uh, Margaret woke me up in the middle of the night once, like a little while later. And uh, she was maybe four. She goes, Dad, it was like the middle of the night. She woke up. I'm like, what's wrong? She goes, Dad, have you ever been killed by spiders? And I was like, no. <laughs> oh, she's an idiot. Um. <laughs> <laughs> she once ordered, and there's so many good three-year-old quotes. One time we were at a diner, 
They're like, what do you want for lunch? Like, the, the waitress get everybody or, everybody's orders. What do you want for lunch, little girl? And like, we, you know, she goes, I want a hamburger with no clouds. <laughs> the lady's like, got it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's but that's what you're in for, man. Little kids, uh, there's the age where they say a lot of weird, dark shit. It's cool. Lord of Crimes made gumbo. How was gumbo, buddy? Yeah. What'd you say, Sam? Sorry. I'd say that's chill. Well, he's yeah. cool. He's weird. He's. They, he can, I think you can tell he's going to be like a, a funny kid. He likes to laugh and. Uh, oh, that's good. And not that he's going to be like funny, but he's he's going to be be like enjoy humor. So that's fun. Uh, you know, he'll, I think he'll be judged pretty harshly by his mom and his dad, and be like, "You call that a joke?" Huh. Okay. Right. So we we got to talk about Explain that first of all. Why that's funny to me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't even follow the rule of threes. Put the fuck. Yeah, yeah, come on. I, I one time for stand up, I said, uh, "I'm like I'm, tonight. I'm gonna do. I asked my daughter uh, what I should do for a joke. And this is real. I once asked her. She was like three or four. That's the age where they just say the craziest shit. I was like." Hey, Margaret, uh, tell me a joke that you make up. Like, not like make up a joke, tell me it, and I'll say it on station. And she goes, this is fucking true. She goes, okay, what if there was a horse and a horse and a horse and a zebra? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah, same, oh, and what? same, same, different. Yeah, but, look up. That's a, but you know what? They, she probably got a fucking worksheet like that at daycare. Someone's was like, that one's different. It's a zebra. And so that's what she was thinking of. You know, who knows? Yeah. But um, I, I, I know I don't want to turn into kids story pod uh, uh, show, but kids story boys. But um, it's just on the same tangent as this is very funny. And, and Sam, you probably know this when I was on like, tour. Right, JTH, yeah. I think, or uh, uh, JLTH. J- John Theriel says, do the whitest kids ever talk about weather? Like, I think we that's did. supposed to be a dig, but, like, yeah, we did this episode. <laughs> Welcome back to Dads of the Internet. Um, the last kid story, I swear. Okay, so when whitest kids, we did a lot of tours in, like, 12, 2012, 13. My daughter was, like, one. She was a baby. And so everywhere I went, I would get, uh, you know, buy her a postcard from wherever we're from and write something on it and mail it to her. And, you know, collect them in a book. And so she's a little older. We're looking at some and she's reading them and she didn't know how to read yet, but she's looking at them. I'm going, what do you what do you think this says? She's like, this one says love daddy. And this one says love daddy. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. She's like, and this one says love dad. This one, she says, this one says, I Mar- Margaret, I miss you. I love you, daddy. And I'm sorry I didn't bring back a horse. like oh no like this whole time every time i go away uh this kid's thinking i'm like because you know i was still doing some shows like on the road for stand-up and stuff yeah. so i was still, like we we're probably looking at the books i'd send her another one and so <laughs> just like, every time this kid's like well he's not here but when he comes back maybe this will be the time this will be the one this is the time <laughs> so here's the door open it's like all right come on princess you know <laughs> Margaret, you know you know we're not equipped to raise a horse it's like we live on the bottom floor of a duplex. Like, what's it gonna do? Hang out on this porch? <laughs> yeah, there's there's <laughs> rules about this stuff. Okay? <laughs> you fucking idiot! Uh, no oh, man, uh, this is so much fun about trying to, you know, and it's about never making them feel bad about those errors and weird shit because it's really part of their personality, but just kind of about repeating things back to them in the way that it does go. Like when no. my brother got pneumonia and Margaret's like, oh no, that means he forgot who he is. Like, no, no, that's amnesia. <laughs> uh, you know what's awesome is uh, Wally started playing the piano. Oh! So we have a piano here and he like actually like loves like smashing all the keys and like uh, and he's only like eight months old. He's not. He's not. Uh, he, there's not much he can do. Right. So I. I am really impressed that he is like. Uh, you know, like in like, smashing like all like trying to be like oh the the high ones sound different than the low ones. Right. 
like doing something on purpose and also noticing the results of what's happening a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, yeah. I want to watch them develop, man. Yeah, what else has happened? Everybody's uh, calling him a prodigy now. You should get yeah. him that little haircut. Oh, back yeah, like the guy from the prodigy. Uh, change my pitch. Ugh. Uh yeah uh he's what what he started skateboarding (laughs) he's not that good he can only ollie uh or i guess he can he can shove it too but he's he's learning (laughs) brisco says what movie should i watch i'm probably gonna watch well Probably some uh, peaks, but I might watch Billy the Kid versus Dracula. But I mean, wait, oh, I love, I love Chris Co. What genre do you want to watch? Let's 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 oh. just give us like something to go off of, and we'll, we'll mm, yeah. throw out Rex, or maybe like a movie you like, and you go something like this. Let's like this, like this. Maybe do you want like this? Um. Game I had a really fun text. time on that podcast I was just on, just talking. What about was it about? Movie. It was it was a movie thing. Crime oh, I'm doing a movie one soon. I huh. mean, Manhunter's great. Uh, let's see, crime thriller. I love that genre. Um, oh, M. you know what's really good? What? Sorry, what? I said What'd M. 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 Yeah, you know it's actually really this. That's funny that you say that. A really good kind of pairing with that <laughs> is. Um, there was a, I think it was a '60s uh, Boston Strangler movie called Boston Strangler with right. uh, Henry Fonda and George Kennedy. That that is very similar to M. It has that similar kind of like you know how M like, uh, what's his name? Claude Rains is that who's yeah. in M? Wait, who who plays in M? No, it's uh, well Fritz uh, Lang made the film. It's a German guy. Oh, it's um with the buggy eyes. What the fuck? It's yeah, not yeah, yeah. Claude Rains. It's a uh, God damn it. Peter Laurie. Peter Laurie. Thank you. Yes, Peter Laurie. Uh, hmm. He's a big character in it, but like mm-hmm. the the movie kind of lacks a central character. It's more about the city and, and about that kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the events... And the Boston Strangler is a similar way where... Similar kind of thing where it doesn't really have a... a a major central character. I mean, Henry Fonda might be seen as that, but it, it really like uh, you're not with his character the whole time. You're bouncing around the city, and uh, mm, I like it's that. About, but it's uh, so it's cool. Uh, Do your best Peter Lorre impressions right now. <laughs> I can't even remember what he talks like. Wait, was he? Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Master, didn't he play Igor or something? Or did, did he play Captain uh, Mutiny on the Bounty? Wasn't he that? I could be wrong. I feel like, yeah. Uh, um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, uh, 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 I can't remember. But yeah, uh, thrillers. Um, oh, for some reason, this jumped in my head. Uh, uh, Murder by Decree. It's directed by Bob Clark. It was his follow-up to Black Christmas. And before he made Christmas Story, same guy made all the movies. Uh, Murder by Decree is uh, Sherlock Holmes solving the Jack the Ripper mystery. And Christopher... Who's that guy that replaced Kevin Spacey in that movie? And and he died not that long after. Christopher Plummer. Christopher Christopher Plummer Plummer, plays Sherlock Holmes. And it's fantastic. Um, Yeah, there's so many good thriller kind of movies. Someone asked, didn't I watch Billy the Kid yesterday? Well, no, I wouldn't watch it. I doubt it's a movie I want to watch twice in a row. I did oh, you watch. Know it's a fun one. Go ahead. Um, Shallow Grave, which is uh, Danny Boyle's first major film. Oh, I always uh, want to see that. He did it before uh, Train Spotting, and it's starring uh, Ewan McGregor and Christopher Eccleston, I think. As the Doctor Who himself. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good cast. Someone says they uh, is letting very, you know. Very like modern Hitchcock kind of vibe. I like that. Uh, Speedbox ninety six says Sam, they just did a remake of Boston Strangler with Keira Knightley on Hulu. Oh. I want to see that. I saw the trailers for it. I don't know if if it is a remake or just a kind of another movie about the same story. But yeah, that was a real thing, that. right? Boston Strangler. Yeah, yeah, Boston Strangler was a real thing. Um, here's a weird recommendation, and maybe not for the, the thriller. The podcast things. was Mama Needs a Movie. <laughs> I 
I'm Where's doing Zach? one. Nobody knows. Yeah, we don't. Um, uh, I think I'm his doing... mom's in town. Oh, okay. I'm doing a podcast soon called the best uh the best little horror house in philly and i think that's a funny name because whenever i say horror people think i say horror and that's mm. a podcast that's a play on the best little horrors in texas but so uh every time you come every time he has a guest that person has to pick uh what they think is the best horror movie uh, and then defend it but also there's no repeats so it's like it's been on for a while so um I'm going to go in with either, uh, I think, Drag Me to Hell or Halloween 3 or maybe Deadbeat by Dawn. I don't know. We'll see. Those are some solid picks. I Have you seen, seen Deadbeat by Dead Dawn? No, I haven't seen Deadbeat you, by Dawn. You know what it is? Mm-mm. Uh, Fatum, I think, turned me on to it when he worked at the video store many years ago in L.A. It's uh, it, a very low-budget kind of gory action gang movie from somewhere in Ohio. I forget which town. And it's like the guy just was like, he quit. He got a scholarship to keep going to film school and then quit and took the money and made this film. And like, it's like a a silly kind of gang drugs kind of thing. But the guy's doing all these stunts himself. And like, he's fucking jumping off of like uh parking structures and shit like it's pretty cr- it's it's awesome and the commentary on the blu-ray you can hear this dude and i asked people this the other day on twitter and a lot of people i said what's your favorite commentary i just heard a great one a lot of people said ours um because they're fucking kiss asses but uh you can hear this guy take bong rips like during <laughs> this commentary like <laughs> it seems really great that's and it's his funny. buddies and they're like giving each other shit it's a re- it's like really good because it's just these fucking guys that all have normal lives but 30 years ago they made this fucked up like you know bloody gory fucking misogynist violent druggy crazy ass movie <laughs> and like and now they're just kind of watch it one of them's like yeah uh, i have like a wife and kids now and uh i don't even want them to know about this <laughs> <laughs> That's like uh, if we do um, whitest kids commentary for the last two seasons, what, what it'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> Emily doesn't yeah, know I was in a that. sketch group. She thinks you guys are made up. Uh, what now? She thinks the chat's made up. Who does? Emily. Oh. She doesn't no. know about whitest kids. Don't tell her. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> bridge across right, what time. Movie? I was doing something. Uh, Spoon, we don't even know him anymore. Spoon Tree, who's from Britain, and I love him, uh, su- suggests this movie. And listen to this: Bridge Across Time. David Hasselhoff versus Jack the Ripper in America. The soul of Jack the Ripper magically transports into a into a brick of London Bridge when it was moved to Lake Havasu. <laughs> Whoa. So that he, his soul ends up in America and uh, whoever it is fights David Hasselhoff. Spoon Tree, uh, we host a show on Sunday nights called Trailer Boys. Yeah, where, dude. Uh, you, you gotta if submit you're, that. If you're slinging fire like that, I mean, you, you, you got a show to join. Spoon uh, Tree used to follow uh, the old Timmy Twitch chat uh, streams seven, eight years ago. And Spoonies, uh. Spoonies for real. But he's in England, which means uh, by the time we start Trailer Boys, it's probably uh. the best. But, um, True. Yeah. What Any do you guys think of having Trevor's things. sister as a guest? Yeah, we should do that. She was a good yeah, guest. Should. We should hit her up sometime. Oh, maybe it'd be too sad. But we could do if we're file if we go. Well, I don't know. But if we do a stream the weekend of his birthday. Yeah, maybe. It'd be a couple days before his birthday. Maybe she'd come on. Yeah, that could be fun. That could be interesting. Oh, Spoonie uh, says he's on that. He he watches Trailer Boys every week. He's just low impact. He says. <laughs> oh, you, I mean, you should submit. I think he has maybe once or twice. So, uh, we uh, we should. Speaking of which, we mm-hmm. should. We took off last week on Trailer mm-hmm. Boys, mm-hmm. but this week we are having the tournament. It's going to be, we're having eight guests, 
battle it out by uh, you'll see two trailers vote Perfect. on those trailers no 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 one trailer from each person oh, you'll see two yeah, trailers yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. you as the audience and you won't know whose trailer is which and you vote on one and it's it's single elimination it's just if someone loses it's on to the next person that rules I, I, and i will uh, be there if someone asks i'll be there this will be this is my first tournament though no no and theme it's eight no eight theme. eight people uh, it's an invitational tournament, so the, the eight people have right. uh, been invited. Sorry, Krizko. No uh, submission, then, uh, but next time we will. But eight people, they're going to, you know, bring out their, their big guns. You know, I think some of these people have been holding off on, on trailers mm -hmm. just to save them for the tournament. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Probably. It'll, that'll be a fun one. Um, and Sorry, Chris here, What I like is that, uh, you know, so Trailer Boys, the way they do the points is they add them up over episodes. And so once somebody hits 100, right? They, yeah. And the season ends and they do the tournament. But how fucking cool is it that the tournament this week is in between March Madness rounds? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fucking sick. I did a bracket for the first time ever, man. And I don't know anything about college ball, so I just picked uh, whatever. That's fine. Uh, absolutely destroyed within like six games <laughs> well but they had some upsets i had alabama picks to go like into the final four well, i mean that but that's crazy that's the thing wait is alabama what team lost i haven't been paying attention a couple big ones lost iowa lost alabama there was a number lost. one seed that lost though which has only oh. happened once before a couple years ago oh alabama's still going who am i thinking of Purdue, Purdue, oh, Purdue lost, it, and so you got to think like, you know, unless you have Purdue winning, it is kind of a, like a funny thing because of how, uh, like, when you have, when your team that like you're you're like oh this team's gonna win loses you're like oh i'm still in it but then like you realize like oh in the later rounds like you're you're gone you're you're so dumb mm -hmm. yeah so uh, yeah, alabama what okay uh, the one there's some, some oh virginia i had going i had virginia who was seated four going a long ways and they got beat by Furman. um ugh. west virginia beat maryland i think or no no maryland beat west virginia i'm sorry i had uh, west virginia pick but, but yeah purdue that's Mark crazy Midness, boys or March, March Midness. Midness. <laughs> Midness. <laughs> Midness. Midness whole pizza in my mouth. What? Um, yeah. It's crazy. Did I, did I show you that um, that Megan shirt? Sounds familiar. It's for, it's, what is it for? It's from a podcast uh, that I listened to. Uh, they started making crazy t-shirts on... Uh, Tom Sharpling and Julie Klausner's podcast, and uh -huh. one of the shirts like uh, it says it has you know Megan the Megan doll. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Has a picture of uh, Megan, and it says, "Yeah, I like Megan. Megan, this bag of M and M's disappear." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's really good. Uh, uh, I didn't see that movie. I really want to. I haven't gotten around to it yet. That's fine. Is it as good as Malignant? No. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, we did get a, a, a. Let me do. There's a couple of donos. Sam Hamich. Oh wait, donated. Oh, now I'm reloading. Five bucks and said, "Hey, Darren. Oops, sorry. I didn't read that while I was still." <laughs> I tried to. Five and bucks and yeah, it's still yes, nothing. Thank you. Uh, we got lots of uh, uh Turk and Mago resub and uh, has been gifting tons of subs. And Endless Mike also resubbing, CMB Dev, uh, Grab Sack, Turn and Cough. Great name. Resub. Thank you. Nice, Horse Paint. Nice. Uh, so, oh, wait, that was a couple days ago. Okay. Uh, which I probably missed those doing Zucchini Boys because I was deep into the deep into the food and I got drunk. Um, okay. Beans resubbed. Thank you, Beans. Hope you're doing all right. Dana uh, 7, Cool Yan, Flowers. Funky Child said, I had a stint in my bladder. When they removed it, they filled my bladder with water by shoving a tube up my dick. 
Then they stuck a hook down my dick and pulled the stint out. When it came out, my dick spun around like a helicopter propeller spraying water all over the place. It was traumatic. Wow. That's oh. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, they resubbed for 27 months, so we can read their gross story. Thank you very much. Oh, All my right. God. Uh, Bane Damage, Alex Alleman, Bain, uh, 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 Teddy Twitch. I'm reading all these wrong. 1990. Thank you to everybody who did that. And if I missed you, I'm able to get to you next time. Um, and I didn't have any fan art prepared for tonight, so we'll get a little of that uh, next time, too. But, uh, but we are going to... Uh, but, 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 yeah, we'll have Trailer Boys tomorrow. I'm not going to do Zucchini Boys weekly because it, it does take a lot of setup. But I will, uh, I think I'll stream some video games this week. Maybe I'll make my daughter forget her Switch at my house again. I'll steal it Ooh, and sick. play Pokemon. Although, you know what? Somebody said Deadly Premonition is on sale on the Steam Spring Sale. And I think that'd be a fun playthrough. That's like a mystery game that's also supposed to be really crazy. Ooh, that's cool. Like poorly written, you know, and like very weird. Huh. It's like a famously weird game. So I think it's like three dollars right now. It is very Twin Peaks. I've heard that. People say Deadly Premonition is Twin Peaks a game. I think that's perfect. Maybe I'll play that this week. Anyways, yeah. Sam, you uh, probably need to go to bed, huh? Yeah, I need to go to bed at six. Uh, I am pooped, guys. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so low energy. Okay. Timmy, you like picked it up for me, though. You, you carried it. You Who? Know. You. What? Oh, I your, en- I your energy. You carried it. You picked oh. it up. You yeah, and I'm not show. even on cocaine. Yeah. Who needs That's cocaine? Like I, not you. Not me. Some people. Uh, <laughs> That's probably a wrong thing to say. But anyway. Um, cool. Well, thank you, uh, Hortown and everybody else. And yeah, uh, watch this uh, space. Follow us on Twitter or Instagram to figure out uh, when we're streaming because it's still not regular. So we don't, it doesn't, wouldn't really make sense to do the uh, schedule yet, but we'll get there. Who should we raid? Oh, good question. Okay. Deadly Premonition is $3.74. So I will be getting it. Fuck. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. I'm coming back now. Who do we raid? Do I hear birds? Yeah, probably out my window. Oh, good. Uh, Whistle's face is a good DJ. Is that something? David Crosby? What are you guys talking about? We're talking about raiding another Twitch page. Um. Evan? Oh, there are Twitch pages that, called Evan. This, this girl here's really pretty. <laughs> oh, here's another really pretty girl. Oh no. Uh, no, that's a okay. guy. That's we'll a, raid the oh, prettiest girl. This girl's pretty. Super deformed keeps asking for us to do a Pip impression. Are they talking about uh, Bumper Center Myers? Or. Maybe they're talking about Great Expectations. Oh, there's a new version of that coming up. Is oh, it? yes, please, for my goddamn girlfriend. Well, okay. Uh, I think they accidentally said GD and then GF, but I think they're saying yes, please, for my goddamn girlfriend. She loves B&M. TMI. Um, oh, oh. Uh, Butts and muscles. Well, I was hip. So uh, all I remember lines-wise was like, I love my dad! Right? When he's, yeah, yeah, is that when he's that, dying that or no he's fighting right? he's fighting yeah I think Trevor rolled like a Trevor kept asking him if he loved yes if he loved him yeah and then it kept saying that right he kept rolling poorly or something right yeah he kept rolling poorly but then kept re-rolling mm, that's funny um, what do you think about that Dungeons and Dragons movie coming out I think it looks sick I can't wait to see it is that is so things. do you is it based on uh, uh, a, a mission? What would you call it? A, a, a quest or a quest, certain yeah. story package or whatever they call them. I, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, story package. There's a thing. What am I? Story package doesn't sound right. What is the fucking term we're trying to think of here? And quest module. There we go. It's okay. like story package. No, it's way dorkier. Both words. Much dorkier. <laughs> um, 
Uh, I had not that I know of, and I don't know if it takes place in one of their branded worlds, like uh, you know, Forgotten Realms or Dark Sun or Dragonlance. I think it's just a Dungeons and Dragons movie, but the cast is killer, you know. Um, and I feel like it's one of those things, like in the late '90s, early 2000s, when they made a Dungeons and Dragons movie, and they would make these things where they just the uh, no one had the right angle to make an epic, crazy, silly movie, and now they do, you know. So, you know, because one, the the Marvel movies are just getting way, way too, there's too much we need to, like, take a break. But um, one thing they did was make uh, make it okay to, like, make your movie oh. about the thing you're basing it off of and not try and be so fucking... Uh, you know, ashamed of it. Like all the early X-Men movies where they're just wearing leather suits instead of their cool costumes. It's, it all felt very like they were ashamed that it was actually a comic book movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think now it's okay to not do that. So now I feel like they can make a D&D movie that's just like fucking bonkers. You know? All right. Uh, Timmy? Yeah. You, you gotta go. I'm sorry. There's this guy. His name's Sir Lar. He's playing Diablo 4. Ooh. Diablo 4? Is it out? I don't know. He's playing it on PC. It looks like it's multiplayer now. Wasn't it? Wasn't Diablo three single player? Diablo four came out yesterday. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) So I feel like this seems like a good idea. Yeah, do it. Uh, Oh, it's beta. It's an invite only beta. Okay. Oh, okay. You're an invite only beta. What? That's what she said, bro. Oh, well, whoops! I just typed typed that into his in chat. chat. I think into his chat oh. <laughs> by accident. Oops. So, hey guys, if they're making fun of us, just tell them not to make fun of us. Yeah, tell them seems right. cool. Tell them really I'm lay hard out of that. Just keep saying that we're cool, please. Yeah. It'd be nice to them to represent our brand well. You know, try and talk about balls. But, but like, try and get, you know, Sir Lar to like compliment us. Like, find <laughs> out if Sir Lar thinks we're cool. Uh, that would be really great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and maybe find out if Sir Lar's dating anyone. He seems chill. No, Sir Larry, you got, got a special subletter or what? <laughs> uh, all right. Here we go. Um, we got all right. the raid. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at that. Cool. Can't all right. I'm gotcha. going. Yeah. And, oh, we're done. Um, okay. Well, bye, Sam. Except Lawrence. Sleep. See sleep. you, Timmy. I hope the baby lets you Well, sleep. let's stop hot, though. Yeah. Let's get raided by whitest kids you know. Did it have problems?